What's up everyone? So another driver update today, 21.2.2 just released. It's got fixes for older games and for Wolfenstein Youngblood with Sam enabled. And they've also listed a few known issues that users have reported and they've probably been able to reproduce. So yeah, hopefully they get those fixed in the future. But mainly I'm just here to test these drivers. Even though they're not like a uh, certified release, they're an optional update. Uh, I like to keep my drivers up to date just to see if anything good or bad is happening with the with the driver performance. So I've got Heaven open here and I'm only going to be testing uh, mainly the purpose of these videos is to test the stability and you know if you can record on them, if anything's broken, if there's any really bad bugs that I encounter and so far it's been smooth sailing. and. For, for now, I'm just gonna. I don't have a lot of time today, so I'm just gonna test the Radeon Relive benchmark. So, if you've been following my driver testing, you'll know that I run it with um, with recording on and off. And I'm just gonna be testing it with recording on because that's actually more of a stress test than recording off. Because recording on puts more load on the on the GPU altogether. So, just for now, if, when I have the time, I'll do recording on off. But just for for this driver release. Uh, since it's not a big one anyway, I'll just be doing the recording on. So here's Heaven, and we're going to do Heaven, and then after this we'll do Metro Exodus. And that's it. So let's go. See how stable this stuff is. And um, if, if you've been following my my testing or my channel, you'll also know that I've been messing with my RX 5700 since upgrading to Ryzen 3600. As you can see in the top left, uh, on the OSD, you can see my temperatures, and you might notice my VRAM temperature is actually better now. It's because I swapped over to Gelid uh, GP Extreme thermal pads. So I had like an issue. I was using some hack job thermal pads that I used for my Extreme IV because uh, I used full size thermal pads. And when I downgraded back to the pulse cooler because of clearance of the backplate, I didn't want to just depend on tiny heat sinks directly on the memory. I wanted to have like a proper heat sink on the GDDR6 and when I swapped back to the pulse cooler I didn't have the original memory pad so I was like using thick three millimeter ones that had clearance issues with the core temps so the core temps got really high and throttled and so I cut them by hand down to half the size so I was trying to approximate 1.5 millimeter I ended up cutting some of them to two millimeters and some of them to one millimeter and it was all over the place and I, I just ended up buying a proper 1.5 millimeter Gelid kit because that Gelid thermal pads are more plush, like they, they're more, they'll compress easier. So then I didn't have, as long as the cooler has good pre mounting pressure, I didn't have to worry so much about clearance with the core. So now you can see my core temps, uh, that's also using Noctua NTH1. And the core temp, uh, the delta between the hotspot and the core is pretty pretty good and the VRAM is much much better so the VRAM before was pushing it about five to eight degrees hotter and yeah I'll be I'll be doing a video on that I just need the spare time to put all the I've got all these clips of when I was installing the memory pads and I'll be doing that in a follow-up video soon but uh, something to talk about while waiting for these benchmarks and what else mainly that that's the main thing I've done and and I've been dabbling in mining not to be a miner because I know that some people have like this hatred towards miners if you're doing it as a gamer to make a quick buck while your PCs otherwise idle or unused I don't see the harm in it uh, you're not really encouraging anyone you're just getting in you're, you're saving yourself from missing out as long as you do it safely and make sure your memory temps are okay so if you if you try nice hash mining, make sure you check uh, install hardware monitor or some other uh, monitor that can check your memory temps because nice hash will only show your core temps. And you want to set an aggressive manual fan curve or a if you set a, a fan curve based on your CPU, you have to account for the fact that the CPU won't get very hot uh, when mining Ethereum. So you have to set like a curve that adjust based on 50 degrees instead of gaming loads which would be up at 60 70 degrees so I've been messing around with that I'll, I'll share some info on that too but I'm, I'm not planning on getting back into mining I have mined before I've had mining rigs before but not when there are shortages and I don't agree with doing with hoarding when there's obvious shortages 
because yeah it would be pretty scummy to the local gamers this is looking pretty good though I mean you can see in the bottom right uh, if, uh, if you can actually see because I'm on ultra wide and I know this, that the text can look small for some users that's why I've, I've got everything um, everything open here with the OSD in the larger size but it's looking it's looking good it's look no issues at least in heaven so 46.7 on the minimum 192 on the max and we'll see the average soon There we go. Uh, let's see what it how it compares to the previous 21.1.1. So I'll just bring this over to the side over the driver info. And so 21.1.1, we had reporting on 94.5, 2379, 45. So basically, I would even though these are all better, I would still call this within margin of error. It might be slightly better because my memory is more stable. I, I have you know installed better pads and it, it it's the same memory speed I haven't overclocked my memory but just having better thermals can improve performance even if just by a few few FPS so right now I would just say this is in margin of error but the main point is that it's running stable so I'll just put this data in real quick So that's that. And then we'll run Metro Exodus. But yeah, that looks pretty solid. Look, the temperature even got up to 70 as it's heating up longer. Okay, so Exodus should be in the speed drive. Where's my Epic Games folder? All the way here. I've got a driver benchmark profile. And the, the main point, it's not specifically to test real world performance because I know most people are on 1440p and 1080p. The, the main purpose is stability and to load the GPU. So running at 3440 by 1440, even with all the fancy features off, already puts like a max load on the GPU because it's a, it's a GPU benchmark. So don't worry about that too much. It's more to see that our test results can line up with, can at least match the previous driver or be within margin of error along with no odd behavior like crashing or anything like that. This one takes a bit to load up. So just give it a minute. I, need, I think I need to switch to uh, benchmarks actually, because it does take a while. Even not recording, it'll it'll take a while to load up. It's a bit. It's one of the slower ones. Maybe Superposition would be a good alternative, but I wanted to use a real a, a proper game. So I don't know. Tomb Raider, maybe. Tomb Raider loads up pretty quick.
go. So we'll ignore these graphs because a slight uh, high max, sometimes the FPS will spike really high or really low and it can throw the graph off. So as long as it's fairly consistent, I think it's the same as other runs. We, we just need to compare these, this data here at the bottom. So previous driver reporting on. 57.55, it's all within margin of error. So yeah, uh, everything's normal as far as these two benchmarks go. So I don't know if I'm gonna start adding more benchmarks or I might switch over to one that loads a bit quicker, but we'll see in the future if anyone makes this suggestion in the comments, because I know people watch this, but not many people, not many have bothered making a suggestion. So we'll just stick to what works for now um, if I do encounter anything weird, because I do play other games, Hunt Showdown, uh, Escape from Tarkov, and those are a bit hard to benchmark because there's no built-in benchmark. But Hunt Showdown, Escape from Tarkov, and Cyberpunk, if I do notice anything weird, I will be doing follow-up videos on any driver that has issues with the, with the games I play, uh, just to give people a heads up. So I, I have read that some people mentioned issues with this specific driver in Cyberpunk, which I'm going to test later this evening and... If no video pops up on my channel saying there's a problem, then you can assume that it's likely just to do with that particular setup of the user that was complaining on Reddit, or it's to do with uh, user error and configuration because I do keep my drivers in a very specific, like I, I keep them set up in a specific way. I do not use the factory settings. Uh, if I factory, like for example, because you see how I'm running MSI Afterburner, if I run, for example, my this stuff, uh, the in-game overlay, chill, anti-lag, boost, if I keep that stuff enabled, I get issues. Uh, I will run into issues with certain games uh, and with fluctuating performance, like unstable performance, because some of these settings are meant to save power and they do affect performance, but not necessarily in a way that you'll feel. They just affect the frame rate and the, the consistency, but it's working as intended. So if your FPS is being limited from chill or if it's being if it's more dynamic because of boost, that is how it's supposed to behave, but it can look a bit weird when you're looking at FPS numbers. So that's like the purpose behind that. And as well, if you leave your over here, in-game overlays, in-game overlays are built into the Radeon drivers. If you leave them enabled by default and you run other overlays like Afterburner, that's a primary source of all the flickering and black screening kind of strange issues that users report when they go from NVIDIA to Radeon. Uh, to AMD because they expect that they can use the exact same software because it's universal. Like, you know, you can use Afterburner with AMD or NVIDIA, but the main point is that you have to disable one and not, you know, not run them both together or you get that flickering. And same with fan profiles. Uh, Radeon, unlike NVIDIA drivers, Radeon Adrenaline has the performance tuning tab for all the fan control. And, if, and it's enabled by default on an automatic curve. But if you go into Afterburner and set your own fan curve, they conflict with each other. And that can also cause flickering and your fan speed will just, your fan will spin up really loud and go down and go up and down. And it's just like, it's, it's like something's broken, but really it's just to do with the conflict of the driver control of the fans. And you can simply set Afterburner to auto and see these settings here. This is not a profile. This is just Afterburner reading what is set up in Radeon, but I don't use Afterburner at all for any tuning. I just use Radeon, uh, the Radeon drivers. So this is just here for the sake of having my OSDs open, on-screen display monitoring, uh, to get that OSD to come up in the benchmarks. But I'm not, and, and yeah, this OSD will conflict with with the in-game overlays under that general tab. So when you disable that, you have to uncheck here, and you also have to go into hotkeys and delete anything relating to in-game overlays, which is, I don't even know if they've got the hotkey anymore. They changed it. Recording hotkeys. I think that there was an in-game overlay hotkey. Maybe they've they've removed it. So it's just it's just a bit more simplified. It's just this here. Yeah. So it's just that you have to disable that, and then you'll be you'll be pretty good. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and appreciate the support. Please like and subscribe if you if you like this content, so that I know. Well, even just likes on the video, you don't have to subscribe. But if you like it, at least it lets me know that these videos are useful to some people. And so I can keep doing them in the future because, yeah, if, if, they're, if no one's watching them, there's no point. I can just find, like, something else to, to do videos on. Okay, cheers. And bye-bye.